Can you have kids? Have you gotten any benefits from having cancer? Is it okay to break up with someone because of cancer? Yes, absolutely. Hi, I'm Samantha, welcome to my channel. I've been making this list on my phone for a while of questions that I just don't answer whenever I get asked them in the comments. Um, some of them are just frequently asked questions, like I, get, I just get tired of answering the same thing over and over again, but most of them are actual questions that I just have avoided answering. Sometimes just because I think they're not interesting and sometimes because I actually don't want to answer them. So I'm going to go through those questions now and uh, yeah. Okay, starting off really deep, what do you think your prognosis is? This one is one that I've been avoiding because it, it doesn't have an answer. Um, there's just not enough research out there or statistics that can tell you what my individual prognosis is. I like to think that I'm going to live for a very long time. I can tell you my diagnosis and, I, and you can look it up and you can try to find information on it that satisfies you. I was diagnosed at age 22 with stage four breast cancer. The cancer was ER positive, PR positive, HER2 negative, spread to some auxiliary lymph nodes and some internal mammary nodes and also spread to a rib. The reason that it's stage four is that it spread to the rib. So you can look up stage four breast cancer statistics and they don't look very great for like a five year survival rate, but cancer only spread to that one bone. We shot it with radiation and now it doesn't uh, light up on PET scans anymore. So hopefully we just got all of that. All of the other cancer was either shot with radiation, removed during surgery, or chemo shrunk it. I can't answer that question because I, I literally, I have no idea. That's not something that like my doctors have told me. That should reassure you right there. Like my doctor has never told me, hey, you only have a year to live. Like that has just never happened. So I'm hoping to live a long time. <laughs> Have you changed your diet since cancer? I get so many questions asking, do I eat sugar? Have I changed to a plant-based diet? And the answer is no. Well, <laughs> the answer is I have not changed my diet. A lot of people say that changing your diet helps. I'm just not willing to do that and I just don't think it'll make a difference. I'm still gonna eat sugar, I love sugar. I mean, I ate more sugar in college than I do now, that's just like a fact of being in college. So I guess before cancer, I did eat more sugar, but in general, I am fairly healthy. I eat lots of vegetables, but no, I haven't changed anything. I haven't gone fully vegan or vegetarian or whatever, I still eat meat. Whenever I post a video of me wearing the compression sleeve or glove, people ask what it is, and that's what it is. It's a compression glove slash sleeve, and I wear it whenever I travel usually because on planes, my arm swells um, because I had lymph nodes taken out of my arm, and lymph nodes are there to help reduce swelling. Whenever I go on trips, especially to Florida, like Flor Florida ruins my arm. It puffs everything up. So it's just, it's just lymphedema that sometimes is worse than other times. So sometimes I can not wear it and sometimes I do. I was wearing my glove yesterday. I'm not wearing it today. I, it just depends on the day and the situation. What is your biggest fear about sharing your cancer journey? I've thought about this a lot because it is something I'm afraid of. I'm afraid that people will think, <laughs> one of the questions that I get a lot is why do you care so much what people think? And like, obviously, I don't really, but I also do, okay? Um, I'm afraid that people will think that I'm doing it for attention, and I'm afraid that it will kind of change me in a way that I am doing things for attention. I try to put information out there in these videos that is going to be helpful for people that are going through something similar, or is something that's just sharing my journey, because when I started this, uh, a lot of people around me were very concerned um, with my health. And so I wanted to give updates to those people that were close to me. And, and in the process, it turned into helping other people, uh, connecting with other people. People would reach out to me by seeing my YouTube videos. And then I would, you know, have a friend that was in their 20s that had breast cancer, which was like super hard to find just in the world because it's not common. But I reached those people reach out to me, I reached out to them. So this has kind of in a way just helped me through my journey by doing this. And also I think helps some other people when they see my videos. 
I am afraid just because of the way like the algorithm works that people will just be like, oh, you're posting like a clickbait title or whatever. But like, I want people to see the videos. Like the reason that I'm putting it out there is because I want people to see it. I want it to spread awareness. I want it to help someone. So it's, it's like finding the balance between making a video because it'll get you views and making a video because it will help someone or um, is just like the original goal of my channel. And I guess I'm kind of afraid that maybe it will corrupt me in some way. And I try to be really conscious of that. I just hope that people realize the reason that I'm doing the things that I do and won't look at, and won't look at it as me trying to get attention or sympathy because that's just not it. <laughs> what happened after your fissure surgery? If you saw my video about the fissure surgery, which isn't really a surgery, it's just kind of like a small procedure, but um, the fissure did go away. It took a while, and I honestly think the biggest thing that helped it go away was me stopping my medicine. It was getting better um, after the procedure, but the thing that really made everything just heal was getting off the medicine. And so I would say that the procedure is very helpful if um, you just need something to help you get to the place where you can heal. But if you still have something going on that is like directly causing the issue, because I think my medicine was causing the issue, it's probably not going to completely heal you unless you also like get rid of that other thing. I do think it was super helpful because I think I did need like that push, that help to get to healed because it was so bad at that point. Have you gotten any benefits from having cancer slash have you ever played the cancer card? I have gotten a lot of things because I had cancer. Right after I was diagnosed, I got tons of gifts and cards, um, flowers from, you know, family, friends. It was super nice and I didn't deserve any of it, but um, yeah, so that happened. Have I ever played the cancer card? I don't think so. There was one time when Gray and I went out to dinner at a very nice restaurant. We had this $200 gift card that was given to Gray as a graduation present. And um, we were like, oh, this is gonna be so awesome. Like, let's just go all out because we have all this money to spend here. So we each got an appetizer, we each got a meal and we each got a dessert. And so we just went all out at this place. And then at the end of the meal, um, we just get told that someone paid for our meal and I do think that that was because I looked like a cancer patient at that point. So that was something super generous that somebody did that um, we didn't even get to thank them. We don't even know who it was. They wouldn't tell us who it was. So, um, and I, we just felt really bad because we were like, we wouldn't normally order this much food. Like we came hungry, we came knowing that we had a gift card and somebody paid for our meal. I assume it happened because it looked like I had cancer. Are you cancer free? So that really just depends on who you ask. There's a bunch of people that I've seen like on Instagram that say that they're cancer free as soon as they get the surgery that takes their cancer out or like the bulk of their cancer out. And then there are people that say they're cancer free after they have been NED, no evidence of disease for an entire five years. That five years from your diagnosis, like there's a huge chance of reoccurrence. So I would, I don't like to say cancer free for myself, but um, whether or not you think I'm cancer free, that's just up to you and your definition of cancer free. But I am NED. I don't have any evidence of um, disease on my PET scan. Is it okay to break up with someone because of cancer? My answer might shock you on this, but I think yes, absolutely. I think that is a totally valid reason if you are just dating somebody. If you're married, no, you like, you literally signed up for being with them through sickness and health, so no. But if you're just dating somebody, yeah, I think that's a totally fine reason. Gray and I talk about this a lot. We had been dating for a little over a year when I got diagnosed, but if we had been dating for less time than that, we probably would have broken up. I made it very clear when I was first diagnosed that if Gray wanted to stay with me, then he had to be 100% fully in on the entire journey. He had to know everything. He had to go with me to things. I wanted him to be fully involved. And I didn't think that our relationship would have survived if he was half in it, or if I didn't trust him to be fully in it. I can speak more about my side, but like, I really had to trust him that he wanted to be there and he wanted, 
he wanted to be in the relationship. I was dealing with something like super extreme. It was gonna be really hard for me to focus on myself, let alone another person. But I needed to if I wanted that relationship to work. Just because I had cancer didn't mean I could just like give up on the relationship and Gray was gonna do all the work. Like, I still needed to do things. So if you have cancer and you just, like obviously, obviously Gray pulled more weight in our relationship when I got cancer. I, he picked up the slack like a lot because he needed to and I, I was going through a lot, sure but I still needed to give attention to that. Like I couldn't make him pull all the slack. And if I wasn't able to do that, then we would have broken up because that wouldn't have been fair to him for me to just be like, oh, like, sorry, I can't pay attention to you. That's totally fine if that's what you wanna do. Like it's totally fine to be like, hey, I have cancer. I need to focus on me right now. We need to break up, totally fine but you need to do that, you know? So like, I, and then for the person, for Gray in this scenario, he needed to know that he was going to be fully in this and um, be able to support me through it. Like if he, if he thought that he couldn't do that, then he should have broken up with me, but he did. So we stayed together. But I totally think that that is a very valid reason to break up with someone if you are just boyfriend and girlfriend. There's too many factors. Like there's there's so many things that go into it. And Gray and I have another video talking about how cancer affected our relationship if you're more interested in that. But I see so many people be like, oh, like if he broke up with you, that would have just been a jerk move. And it, it just, it wouldn't have been. Like that would have, we would have broken up because we needed to. And like, that was the thing that was right. I've gotten multiple people who have said to me, like, you're so lucky that you had Gray because my boyfriend broke up with me. And I, you're right. I am so, so lucky. Like he is incredible. Aren't you kind of glad that you dodged a bullet there? I know it's super sad when you break up with someone, but like, honestly, it would, it would just be for the best. Like clearly that relationship's not meant to work out. How has cancer treatment affected your a bunch of people got mad at me when I posted my hormone therapy side effects video and I didn't mention anything that had to do with Honestly, there's there's just so many side effects and I did not list every single side effect in that video. Like there's just too many. That was a side effect being really dry down there. I really didn't realize how much it affected anything until after I got off my medicine and everything went back to normal. It was hard for me to comment on because I didn't know any other way. But now that I do, I can say that it had an impact. It's definitely something that I can see as being a problem in your relationship, especially if you're used to one way and then things suddenly change. But with us, it wasn't that big of a deal just because um, we didn't know it any other way at that point. And Obviously, Gray had been along with my cancer journey from the very beginning, and so he knew everything that was going on and the kinds of impacts that it could have. So um, he's just been super understanding the entire way about that kind of stuff. And um, the biggest, the bigger thing that was a problem was just the nausea. You don't necessarily want to go have like a whole makeout session when you feel like you want to throw up, like obviously. Honestly, I think if you have just open communication with your significant other, it's not going to be that big of a deal. Can you have kids? I get this question a lot. I don't know because I haven't gotten pregnant. Is it possible that something got damaged during chemo? Sure, I guess so. Um, but my periods did come back after chemo. They did come back after stopping my hormone medicine. So that is kind of like the biggest indicator that things are working correctly again. I did freeze my eggs before I started chemo because there is like the possibility that things get completely damaged. And so I do have like 17 eggs frozen in a freezer somewhere. I don't remember if that's the exact number. I would love to not use that, but I do have that option. I know a lot of people when they say stage four, that makes you think you, you can't have kids again. And that's because a lot of people who are stage four are basically um, on treatment for life. And obviously I'm not because I stopped my medicine and my situation is different because I'm NED right now. 
um, than somebody who actively still has cancer in their body and they're just like gonna be on treatment for the rest of their life. I'm not in that situation, so I can have kids, like, but can I have kids? That's the question, you know? So like, probably I can have kids unless there's some other fertility problem that is with me or with Gray and would have happened anyway, whether or not I had cancer. I don't know why I did so much hand movements there. That's all the questions that I have. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was somewhat interesting. If you have any other questions, leave them down below. Maybe I'll make another one of these videos sometime. Yeah, subscribe if you want and watch other videos if you want. Yeah, that's all. Bye.